So, welcome to another episode of Pincade. So, today I wanted to, um, you know, it's snowing out. I don't really have much going on today. Um, this has been something that's long overdue. Is, um, this is the X Arcade um, tank stick, uh, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, it's pretty much a keyboard. Uh, all these buttons send out keyboard. Um, you know, configurations to them. This is actually a mouse on the side. There's two buttons on each side. Those are also like a, one is a keyboard and one's a left click of the mouse and one's a right click of the mouse. And um, even the joystick outputs are, uh, you know, a keyboard um, codes that are sent. So the good thing about this is that it works very well with um, a lot of... Uh, emulators and and things of that nature because it's using keyboard um rather than sending like a uh, joystick uh, uh like a joystick signal um the only problem i have with this so far is uh eventually i want to build you know a real meme podium and uh i plan on this is this thing's really dusty and dirty because it's just been sitting around for months now um but I want to build a podium and I'm going to pretty much just either dump this into, you know, a podium that I build or, and, and put a different overlay on it. Cause I really don't love this graphics design. Um, or I may just gut out all of the components and build, you know, a podium top that flips, flips forward on a hinge and all that stuff. And, do it the way I really want to do it. But um, one of the biggest problems that I wanted to do with this right off the bat was change these joysticks. Um, these are like Euro style fighting joysticks. And um, at first I didn't really think they were that bad, but as I played more and more, uh, I realized uh, what's their downfall. They feel okay, you know, when you first start messing with them. But what you find is that there is like micro switches inside that have um, like an arm on them, and then the grommet of this uh, of this joystick is rounded, um, and I'll go through that a little bit later. But it's rounded, and therefore doesn't make good contacts when you do like a like. I don't know if you can hear the clicking, like. So as I'm doing diagonal. I could only hear one switch firing off and I have to like kind of like do a big rotation to it in order to get, you know, the other switch to, to kind of fire off at the same time, which means when you're doing fighting games and stuff, you're getting, you know, inconsistent signaling sent. Now this joystick... I think it's doing the same thing. Uh, one way I tried to fix this was I, I bent the um, the arms out a little bit, and I wrapped the grommets with with uh, black electrical tape to try and make them a little thicker, but they just don't feel good. So what I ended up doing was um, the other thing that annoys me is that they put this dust washer on the top, and I believe if if everything I'm hearing from other people is that it really should be on the bottom. Uh, underneath the uh, panel because it actually makes a difference to the life of the joystick and how it feels over time as it gets worn in or whatever. Um, so what I ended up doing, long story short, is I ended up buying the IL or IL, I forgot what it stands for, um, Euro sticks, you know. These are arguably better than the haps. Uh, there was some situation with Suzo hap. Uh, it used to just be hap and ill used to make the components for them. And then um, what ended up happening is uh, Suzo and hap partnered together and they moved all their production into into Asia or whatever. And then ill was kind of left, you know, out in the cold. And um, started reproducing the uh, the other components themselves and, and sending them out. Um, 
and people realized that the hap quality had gone down and that ill was really you know producing the same quality component that they uh, were looking for i've watched a lot of different videos from john's arcade and many other people that are using this um and and i would have to agree at this point that they are correct right if i hold this and i and i fire off the click sound number one if you know just moving it right there i could feel that it's you know hitting those those very sensitive it doesn't have a dead as much of a dead i mean if you see how much i'm wiggling this right here to make it kind of fire both of those uh things i'm just doing a very little adjustment here to do it on this one the other thing is the play that's here is not this feels much sturdier this one feels like very wobbly and loose like the like the joystick has been manhandled and i could guarantee you that it hasn't because nobody really plays this other than that side um i i've yet to have anybody over really and sit here and play you know mortal kombat or street fighter 2 for you know hours at a time um it's usually just me playing on that side so this joystick is literally brand new and um it feels you know just wobbly this one feels nice and kind of uh i won't say super tight but it's definitely um it's definitely feels much sturdier and reactive now on the inside of it it's got this square um i guess i guess you call us uh polyurethane type uh, whatever all i know is that this grommet or actuator whatever you want to call it is a big difference according to everyone i've been hearing with the the hap uh, ones um the hap competitions as well that look like this kind of don't respond like this from what i'm understanding but if you notice um yeah, I should get a little bit closer there. You can see, you know, how close that, that grommet is to actuating those switches. I mean, that's a very slight... I'm just doing a very, very slight movement, and it's hitting that. Now, if I'm doing a diagonal movement, you can see that it is definitely hitting both of those switches. So, if I'm doing, like, a Hadouken motion, right? Well, I should probably do it the other way, because... You can see that it's hitting all the switches very nicely, right? Um, and these are like supposed to be some like uh, really good micro switches that are in here. I'm not really familiar with what these are. They they used to say they were cherry switches, but they don't look cherry switches to me. But I thought cherry switches meant that it was like a a beige casing with a red um, micro switch, but this stuff is not hard to, to connect it there's a there's a ground there's a normally closed and a normally open i believe it is these don't look like they're marked uh, or maybe i can't see it because of the black oh yeah i see it but i need a flashlight or something to read it but we're gonna um just pull off this e-clip here and take this kind of apart and that'll that'll get this joystick out um, so that we can get it into, uh, start getting it into the case. And I'll show you what's uh, the situation with this other one. So, I'm just going to step away for a second. I'm going to just try and flip this over. I'm just working on a, a living room table and part in the mess, but I really just don't feel like cleaning right now. Now, this might be a little bit of an interesting, uh, I really don't have a workbench in an apartment, unfortunately. But, um... Yeah, all you got to do is just, for these tank sticks, if you have them and you have not worked on them yet, all you really need to do is, uh, inside of these foot pads, um, there's just regular Phillips head screws. And you just take them off. There are a couple turns that come right out. So, there's like eight of these things try and do it quick so I don't have to stop the video. I hate having to uh, put together like 17 videos together um, in order to post it. It's really annoying. Um, 
Oh, come on. So I'm just going to put them off to the side. So I'll have this open in a second. Really wish I'm um, yeah I'm using an iPhone to record, but I really wish it had a uh, like a pause feature where I could just pause the recording for a second and then just you know push it again without having to have multiple files and put them all back together and process that and upload it to YouTube and process that and it just takes forever. Um, probably should add some of this stuff already prep but I was kind of uh I was kind of sitting here watching Band of Brothers and I was just like you know what I feel like putting in those joysticks because I want to play you know it's snowing out I want to play some games today work on work on the virtual pin play some games on the meme set up the the hyperspin and do some stuff that I haven't done in quite a bit of time Okay, last one. Okay. Now, I've seen people complain that this thing is really hard to get up. I don't know why. I just grab one of these foot pads and I pull it up. So, I'll move it in. Uh, so, this is player one. Right, this side. So, um, so I can just angle this a little bit. So this is pretty much the components of it. These are the these are the buttons that you saw. Um, you know, these are the three, three, and then the two, and then this is the joystick. And actually, I thought I used electrical tape, but it looks like I got really ghetto. And I just used uh, uh, scotch tape to try and uh, make this uh, work. Um, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a little closer here. It's kind of hard to try and get the camera in there. So as you can see, these switches have these arms. And these arms are also not that easy to... Uh, I should push this one not too easy to um get them to activate and then i have i had bent them as well to try and give a little bit more play but if you could see, i don't know if you could see that but let me just uh this is like impossible but i'm trying to do it in a diagonal and as you could see it's not really firing both of them right you have to kind of like jiggle it and, and kind of like move it back and forth in order for both um, switches to be simultaneously being hit. <clears throat> and I noticed this, the only reason why I noticed this was because I love Robotron and I was playing Robotron and that's when I realized it and I said, you know, this isn't playing right. This feels like a four-way, you know, both of my joysticks feel like four-way joysticks and Robotron... Um, I don't know if they use like the, I don't know, like the 64 point way joystick or they used an optical, optical joystick. I don't know what they used in the Robotron. I've never really researched it, but I know that you never get a delay when you're pushing a, a, a directional and it's very fluid in the way it moves. Um, so we're, this, this is going to break apart the same way as the other thing. Um, basically, oh, that was interesting. That moved really easily. That probably needs to get tightened. This is like almost going to fall. Anyway, this removes the same way. You take out the E clip, you take out this bushing. Um, and the problem that I've seen before with other people is that the way this is positioned, I'm probably going to have to shave some of that that um 
forgot what they call it, recess the part of where the, where the controller sits um, in order to make it fit. So I might have to run out to Home Depot and get like a little hand Dremel or something like that and see if this thing is even going to fit. Uh, I didn't measure it, didn't really care because this joystick has to come, these joysticks have to come out. The, uh, the buttons I can kind of live with. I don't love them, but I can live with them for now. But these joysticks got to go. Uh, I'll probably rip out these micro switches uh, and then just save these joysticks in the event of an absolute catastrophic failure. Um, these joysticks also are like knockoffs of the uh, Hap Ultimate competitions, whatever they're called. Or they called there. There's uh, I can't remember the names of all those half ones. I'm not really interested in them, but there's a half that's similar to this. So I just wanted to say that even if you see, um, you know, the, the brand name half doesn't necessarily mean that every joystick product they have is going to be good, right? Because they have a half that has this round bushing like this, and it's just as a piece of shit as this thing is. Um, so don't buy it. I mean, if you're playing Donkey Kong, you know, or games like that where the joysticks aren't really complex joysticks and they only really take, like, you know, four-way signals, like up, down, left, to right, and that's it, then you, you could probably get away with this, right? But if you're playing, you know, Street Fighter or Sinistar or Robotron or games of that nature where there's many points... On, on your movement patterns, um, you don't want to have this. You want to have either a, a, an optical joystick, um, which are difficult, by the way, as well. They're not great. Or, you know, those, like, 64-point way joysticks or whatever they are. Or maybe, like, the ill Euro sticks. I don't want to talk about the ill Euro sticks just yet because I haven't actually gotten the physically personally um mess with them but um just another note these switches don't have the uh the normally closed um pin on them it looks like i don't know if the person intentionally broke them off i'm trying to feel um or if they just bought switches that didn't have it um but basically what it is, it's like a circuit like you've learned about, you know, very uh, basic elementary uh, circuits that you would learn about in, in science class or something in elementary school where, you know, normally right now, if there were a current coming through here, it wouldn't be able to go anywhere, right? And then um, once you push this, it, it connects these two and, and, and the signal can go through you know, to wherever it needs to go to. Um, the other pin that's missing would normally be the opposite, where there's always a signal going through it, and then when you push this, it stops sending a signal so that whatever device is looking for it would know, hey, um, you know, I just lost the uh, the signal to it, so therefore it's not, you know, it someone, someone opened the uh, circuit or whatever. But um, I'm not going to take these Eclipse off by hand. What ends up happening is they're they're really hard to get off, and I, I need two hands, and usually they end up uh, really breaking your fingernail, like like bending your fingernail trying to get it off. So I'm going to get a flathead, and I'm going to... Uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that this is just a ground. If you notice, all of these have a brown wire. Um going to them and all the brown wire is a daisy chain together that's just the ground right and uh that's fine and then the other colored wires like the yellow the orange the red and the green are the actual signaling wires and um so all you got to do and these are quick disconnects so all i should have to do is just pull these off and just remember you know that the, the switch on this side is for yellow and the switch on this side is for orange. So I'm going to um, just get this stuff out and apart and then I'll, I'll turn on the video again. You can see the differences in the uh, the grommets and, and what's inside of the uh, 
of the uh, of the joystick itself because there is another uh, grommet or whatnot. Um, and like I said, these just these just pull off. I mean, if you saw how easy that pulled off, I mean, it depends on how bad they crimp the uh, the quick disconnect. But usually, you want your quick quick disconnect to be quick and disconnecting, right? And you just pull it and it comes right off. Uh, excuse me. So, um, yeah, let me get this unratcheted. Let me get this out. I'll take apart both joysticks and let me, let me map the schematic for at least just this side and, um, we'll turn it back on in a minute. All right. So I had one hell of a time getting this stuff, uh, <laughs> apart for one joystick. So, um, this looks like this is going to be a lot longer of a process than I anticipated, but nonetheless it is a part so one thing i wanted to show is i ended up having to take apart the entire joystick um so this is um because everything was like ratcheted on so tightly that i couldn't get any room to uh get the the bolts off and i didn't really have the right ratchet so anyway inside of this uh controller this is pretty much the assembly um like this so that spring is what keeps the uh the controller pretty much in line i'm trying to figure out exactly how this went i have this upside down still no, I definitely have it the right way. Okay. I don't understand these. I mean, this thing like kind of like sprung open as soon as I got it. I guess this thing is like keyed to be a certain way, huh? Do I have this? Wow, I should have really paid attention to <laughs> I don't really care because I'm not going to be using this again. Actually, you know what? I think it does go this way. Yeah, because that's... Sorry. So there's... Sorry, the phone is dying. I'm pushing all things on the phone. Anyway, um, so that's pretty much how it sits like that. And then here is the grommet, um, which sits like there. And this is the other grommet, it's pretty much fixed. I'm sorry, it does slide. This is the other grommet. So the way this works is that uh, this goes into there, keeps it, um, should have taken the washer off dust cover whatever whatever it's stuck on there but yeah this keeps it in that in that groove right there you know allowing it to uh, only move so far and everything else like that and then um this like you saw sits over here and then Here's the E-clip that holds it all together. Here are the uh, micro switches that were was on it. And now here is the uh, new assembly. Um, here is the other actuator. I'm not taking, I'm, I don't plan on taking this apart. Um, since this is rounded here, I should have enough room to get in there with like a little hand wrench that I'm using and, um, not have to, uh, but there's the spring right there and this kind of swivels a little bit better. Um, now, and then here's the E-clip. For some reason, this E-clip was a lot harder to take off than that E-clip. I don't know why, but this one was like really on there. Um... Like I said, this is like a polyurethane plastic. I don't really know how to explain it. But allegedly, this is the better one. 
Uh, I had to take out a lot more than I anticipated. I hope, I'm, I hope I'm pointing it in the right spot, but I had to take out that extra two buttons and um, to try and get enough room to get my hands in there. So now I'm going to see if I can line this up and, and get this in there. Okay, so I got the thing in. To be honest with you, um, it fits perfectly. So if you're getting the, if you have an X arcade panel like this, and you are getting the L joystick, you do not have to actually sand anything down or cut the hole larger or anything. It fits perfectly fine. Um, and I've actually tried it already one time. This is like a Street Fighter 2 Hyper. I don't know if this is like a ROM hack. It, it felt pretty quick. I don't know if it was a ROM hack or not, but um, the response to it definitely feels very good. I mean, there's no... I mean, I'm not the, the, the master at, uh, at, um, Street Fighter, but, I mean, you, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty much getting all the, the moves and, the, and stuff. No, I didn't mess, I didn't do so well in the, uh, the, uh, you can, but, <clears throat> for some reason, I can never do that move too well, but, there it goes. Right, so it's definitely working better, uh, a lot better. I'm actually regretting not just sucking it up and doing the other side at the same time because I definitely want to try it with Robotron. But um, one thing I want to try is um, I'm trying to remember how to even navigate this system. That's not what I was looking for. Haven't played my my uh, Hyperspin. In a while. So one thing I do want to try it on is a, uh, as like a four-way uh, game like Donkey Kong and see how it responds. So nothing, you know, out of the ordinary with it. It still does um, stick sometimes if you're not going uh, properly in the uh, direction that you need. But that's just standard because this is, you know, like an eight-way joystick and Donkey Kong is really a four-way joystick. And this doesn't have that, uh, that actuator. to, um, you know, switch it to a four-way joystick, but for the most part, I mean, I was making barrels go down the, um, down that ladder without too much problem. It's really not easy to control the, uh, the barrels on the first level of Donkey Kong. I'm getting a little bit a weird situation going up and down, but that might be because I'm standing and I'm at a crooked angle. Try not to block the camera too much. Yeah, I mean, very happy with these. I didn't pay too much. I think I got both of them for like 20 something dollars, and that was probably a little bit more because I didn't order it directly from, um, I think it's called like Arcade Paradise or something like that. I actually ordered it from Amazon, which then uh, they sent me a message inside of the box saying next time just order directly from them. Um, they got a multitude of colors and stuff, so you can, if you're doing like a, a cabinet design or whatever, you can probably get joysticks that match whatever you're doing. It would be nice if this guy comes down. Nice. Okay, so maybe I could try point pressing and really see how well this uh, 
Now, of course, this one guy had had to spawn there. Yeah, but I mean, this this is perfect. I mean, this is. And and another thing I wanted to mention is that um, they were they are cherry switches. Upon uh, further investigation, when I was making sure that I was connecting ground to ground and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, um, I noticed that it, when I shined the light on it, it, do, it does say cherry switch on it. I thought they were called cherry switches because they were, you know, beige with the. Uh, I'm just gonna get out of this beige with the uh, red dot on it or whatever. But it, I guess it's just a. Well, I'm not gonna put Fantasia on there. If anybody's familiar with that game, they'll know why. Um, trying to see. It. Oh, Karate Champ would be awesome for this now. I mean, there's so many games that require you know proper uh, functioning joystick. I mean, this, this game, it's, it's not even worth trying because of the other joystick. Same thing with this one. But I I, am, I would say that I definitely recommend it. And if you definitely have a, an X Arcade panel like this, um, you know, fits in easy. It's a good retro change. And, and you get rid of these garbage, uh, you know, joysticks, these cheap half knockoff joysticks that they put in there. I mean... They really don't look that much different, to be honest with you. Um, let me just take this off the tripod. Um, these are a little bit like thinner here, and they go a little bit longer. And these are, are a little fatter and, and shorter. But for the most part, they look um, pretty identical. These may be a little bit taller, too, but I'm not sure. And I put the washer in the inside. I mean, the uh, dust cover, whatever. Uh, you know, I've heard people say that they belong on, on the inside or they belong on the outside. I don't really know how I like it on the inside. It kind of looks wrong to me. I mean, even if it's right, I think it. I think it's wrong. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have to Google that a little bit more to see if that's actually right or not. Because... To me, that looks terrible. So, I may have to take out the E-clip again. I, I will say that's the hardest thing about this, is getting the E-clip out. And if you're retrofitting the XRK, trying to get those those bolts, you know, uh, taken off. Because they were really wrenched on there. And I didn't really have that much room to work, and I didn't have the right socket wrench. So, I had to kind of, like, rig something together to try and get the bolts loosened and out. Um... But once that was done, it was it was straightforward. All right, guys, that's all I got. I would definitely recommend these these ill Euro sticks. They're also a lot quieter. I mean, I don't know if you could hear that with the. Uh, let me exit out of. Uh, let me exit out of. Uh, so, let's see if you can hear this. I mean, you still get a little bit of a click, but it's 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 uh, light. And here's the other one. I mean, it's like night and day of how nice this sounds. It's a it's a softer muted click, but you still get the click to know that you're hitting stuff or whatever. Like I said, I still don't know how I feel about that. I don't know what you guys think. If if so, if I'm wrong, can correct me about this in the, in the comments because I mean I've seen a lot of different people say the washer is supposed to go on the dust cover is supposed to go underneath, but I mean I've never really seen this. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. I'm going to Google it. All right, guys, that's all I got. See you.